Are you serious? Plenty of ways to kill an hour out there. Right now, you are killing one with I, Marcus Bronzy. Uh, me, Nick Bright. What's going on? Yeah, I'm nice, man. I'm nice. Um, Should we uh, state the obvious here? Go on. What's the obvious? Tell me. Is it that the earth is round and not flat? Um, yeah, it could be that. Or it could be that Meat Mill got murked by Drake. Mm, is that that obvious? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, or obvious. it could be it could be the fact that Jay-Z um, has 99 problems. But has he got 100 problems now because of the whole lift scenario thing, you know, with Solange? Yeah, yeah. he's got 100 problems and a lift is one. Yeah, exactly. Just, it's crazy. Ch- change that rhythm, man. Um, yeah, you're definitely not in the uh, How To Kill An Hour studios offices place right no, now where are you in the world right I, now I, i'm not in i'm not in how to kill an hour hq right now i'm uh, i'm yeah. in liverpool because yeah. um one extra live was last night the concert that uh, the radio station i work for puts on once a year so i went to that and now today i'm just uh feeling the feeling the pace of last night okay cool yeah so a chill a chill day for you after that right yeah, yeah, just a little bit, man. Just, just, uh, just been chilling with my missus, just recovering. Good, good. Feeling that calm vibe. Um, yeah, it's needed after yesterday. Yeah, oh, most definitely, most definitely. Speaking of calm, um, this episode is is going to be all about that that catch up that we had with somebody when you were actually in the studios recently. Uh, yes, which is it, it. It was a crazy one, wasn't it? Like, because we like check, killing time with stuff that exists, but we also into like concept stuff. Um, and this concept that we came across was a very interesting one indeed, right, Nick? Yeah, it was. It, it's something that I'd not. Um, I, I, do you know what? Like, it, it completely went under the radar for me in terms of like I, I didn't even know it was something that was being developed and um, thought about for commercial use. Yeah. So, um, when you told me about it, I was very intrigued. Very intrigued indeed. Yes, and um, it's. Well, I, I suppose we're gonna we're gonna play a clip of of a of a conversation that we had a gentleman called Simon Fox about what this type of technology is, um, and and how it can be used, right, Nick? Yeah, yeah. So um, I reckon we should get into that because that will explain it better than me the day after one extra live can. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely, and me the day after like a, a whole weekend of of clubbing as well and and drinking drinks because that's what you have to do when you're in clubs. It's hundred percent necessary. Uh, anyway, the law. yeah, that's right. So yeah, we met up with a guy called Simon Fox. He's a design, di- design director for a company called BFB Labs. Um, the first thing that you actually asked him this, Nick, you said, uh. Simon, what goes on in BFB Laboratories? So BFB stands for Biofeedback. And what we do is we make a type of game called Emotionally Responsive Games. So these are games that you play with biofeedback from your emotions. What exactly is is biofeedback? Okay, so when you are walking around, your body is doing all kinds of things. And is making, uh, kind of, it's, it's creating information while you do that. So we've got ways of listening to that information and using it to, to learn stuff about you. So with the kind of games we're making right now, we use a heart rate monitor. So it's a special kind of heart rate monitor called a pulse oximeter. And um, what that does is it measures the, like blood as it's moving through your body. Uh, and we use that information, the, the, the sort of the gap between your heartbeats, we use that to, to learn stuff about you and your emotional state. Wow. So is, is it, a, I mean, I said this earlier to Marcus, is it a little bit like, you know, the Vernon K um show a thousand heartbeats where they were they were using kind of like the heartbeat to determine how much time you get to answer questions and stuff like that is it kind of a little bit like that i guess much? there's some similarity i mean i can really geek out on this if you guys want to listen to it I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit interested because it's pretty amazing how i don't know you, you can collect data out of the human body just yeah like like to me that's like are we actually machines <laughs> i'm a bit confused <laughs> like have we got usb slots in us somewhere like so just like explain that a bit more for me yeah for sure well so i'll talk a bit about heart rate dynamics which is essentially what we're looking at so i think people are really familiar with the idea of your heart rate right mm-hmm. you know a lot of people you see in the gym would be wearing a chest strap or something like that um and on its own just just viewed call it one dimensionally you know just like at one point in time it's not very interesting i tell i can tell me you know maybe you've just had like a spike of adrenaline or maybe you're running really hard 
but people can have a very high heart rate and feel very calm or be at rest or a very low heart rate and be, you know, if you're a marathon runner and you're really well trained, you're going hard, you, you might have a low heart rate even at really high levels of exertion. What we do is we start to measure your heart rate over time. So once we start to look at, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 5 minutes, 10 minutes of your heart rate, we look for patterns and what you'll start to see is something called a, a sinusoidal pattern. And that, what that means is like, you know, when you see like a music wave form, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's that sort of, sort of same thing. So you get a certain type of wave. And the reason for that is that your heart rate is actually always changing. You know, you, you, you'll look at most heart rate monitors will average out your heart rate over about 10 seconds, which is about one breath cycle. When you breathe in, your heart rate actually gets higher. And when you breathe out, it gets lower. And the reason for that is this kind of, um, tidal relationship between your breathing and parts of your nervous system in your body so actually um your body uh, your brain your respiratory systems and cardiac systems so your lungs and your heart they're all always constantly interacting with your cognition you know your, your your sense of what's going on around you so there's actually a dynamic system at play here and that's what we start to look at and measure so there's a dynamic system that you're measuring that you have all this data for how have you managed to turn all of this interesting information about the body and what it's doing live, have you managed to turn that into a game? That so we spent a long time working on that, you know, <laughs> <I'll bet. laughs> uh, and, and really, really, we've made probably over a dozen different games with this. And the one that we settled on that we're uh, bringing out into the public right now is called Champions of the Shanga. And it's, if you kind of think about it, like. If you were, you know, in a lot of games, you might have like a, like a powerful kind of magic user, you know, someone who's casting magic spells and, and to do damage or to heal people or whatever. And you, this is kind of the thing that you might see in culture. And you think, what kind of state of mind and body would someone have to get into in order to actually do that, in order to actually create magic? And that's, in our game, you, you have to do that in order to get your magic powers to cast your spells, to succeed in the battle. That's, that's what our game is. Wow. So, so I'm, I'm still like trying to understand how just from your, the state of your body, you can cast magic spells and stuff like that. I'm, 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 tr I'm trying to get it, but without having a go, I'm a bit like... Yeah, well, so yeah, and you, you know, you can have a go in a second. Yeah, you know, um, I'm looking forward to that. So but. it's kind of like, I think maybe one of the easiest words to use to to connect to it um that a lot of people would know and we try to avoid using this word because it you know it kind of gives a bit of a slightly false impression but i say meditation you know mindfulness like a lot of people have heard of that and it's kind of a similar state of mind what you're really trying to do in order to to sort of gather magic power in our game is to um get yourself into this really kind of focused state where you can overcome kind of difficulties and obstacles and kind of like the stress of being in a battle situation you know be really zen right and, and and how far do you think this can go how far do you think this technology can go what what more can you do do you, you think you can do with um the stuff you've achieved already do you think it will i don't know break into popular gaming culture is that what you're hoping for yeah we really hope so i mean we're right at the start of the journey with this and the kind of sensors that are out there uh, we're you know it's I think five years from now, we'll be looking at a very different landscape. Much higher qualities of data we'll be able to take in and we'll be able to do a lot more with it and learn a lot more from it. So I think there's some exciting stuff coming out. But for now, you can kind of imagine, you know, uh, mechanics where, for instance, in FIFA, having to kind of take possession of yourself and calm and focus before taking a penalty kick. You can imagine, you know, with a sniper rifle, having to steady yourself and get ready to take a shot. Like lots of places where this can plug into already existing games. And then I also think, you think about the idea of games that know about you and your body and how you're responding. And that's that's really interesting. And that's kind of the space that we're looking to explore. So there's a lot of excitement about VR at the moment, but you're talking about something that's a, a totally different dimension of gaming. So not just you inputting controls physically yourself, but you also having to be aware of the way your body is functioning at the same time. That's right. You're playing with your mind and your body. In the future, I imagine, you know, you could be playing GTA with a VR headset on. But then also you could you could have um, you know what, what what did you say the, uh, the the thing that straps around you is called the uh, heart rate monitor yeah yeah pulse you, oximeter yeah you could have one of those strapped around you as well and and, and you know it make it totally different because you know when you're playing GTA now you're just like oh I'm just shooting up the place I'm just running people over it doesn't matter how I feel because it's it's kind of not real it still wouldn't be real because obviously you're not doing it for real but you would almost have to put yourself in that scenario to think about what you're doing to maybe calm yourself down or make sure your adrenaline goes up higher so that 
you could do specific tasks and complete certain things. So, I mean, for that reason, it would add a really, really interesting new layer to a lot of these games. Yeah, I think so. And I love VR, right? I've got a VR headset at home. I'd saved up my money for it because it's, it's awesome, you know, and I, I, I'm a big gamer. I love the idea of getting deeper into a game, getting more immersed about it. I'm also a games designer, and I like the idea of making games that kind of know more about their user, learning more about the user, so that the player, so that we can create more awesome, more interesting, more exciting experiences. What's the most amount of detail that you can get from somebody once they're wired up to your kit? You know, I want to know if you know what I, I want to have for breakfast this morning, or what I fancy having for dinner tonight, like or who I fancy, if you yeah. just throw their name out. Jeremy Kyle lie detector style, is <laughs> yeah, that what you're yeah. thinking? A live one, yeah. <laughs> that's right, it's totally, it's totally breakfast-related technology, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. So one thing I've done before when pitching this, right, is I'll hook myself up to it and have the data like running live behind me on a screen so everyone can see how nervous I am standing up and talking to them. So we can tell quite a lot about, or we can, we can sort of make some inferences about your mental state, how you're feeling, and how you're how you're handling the situation that's going on around you. You know, are are you calm and in control? Are you starting to freak out a little bit? That's kind of the information that we can get. I, I want to have a go. I'm I'm very. I think I'm going to be calmer than you, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we did have a go, didn't we? We we tested our calmness, right, Nick? Yeah, we did, and um, I was I was quite confident because you know I think I'm quite a calm person. Um, yeah. You know, but it's it's weird because it's hard to tell. Like, I know this sounds weird because it's like your body, but it's hard to tell how you're feeling inside, if that makes sense. On the outside, you might be like, I'm feeling super calm, man. Like, this is nothing. My heart rate feels like it's not doing anything, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But actually, as soon as you're like strapped up to stuff that can read it, it's a bit like, okay, maybe I'm not as calm as I thought. And I, and I also think when you do get like the things strapped onto you, that immediately raises your heart rate anyway because you're thinking about it yeah so he clipped this this device to to our earlobes um with this box that had a whole heap of technology in it that was going to measure our pulse and and all this extra stuff all from this little clip which is quite impressive and me and nick had to out calm each other playing a game you're right nick when you got to think about being calm but also roll into a game confidently and be competitive it's a bit of an oxymoron sort of train of thought like you're kind of trying to push your mind in two different directions so this game that we played nick it was um it was like a turn-based game wasn't it yeah so it's like the best the best the most commercial game that i can think of to describe uh what what this game uh is like in terms of a turn-based game it's like pokemon the the original pokemon on on um the game boy in it so like you have a go i have a go you have a go i have a go um so it was it was kind of like that but um it was, I, I have to say, like, if once you understand it, I imagine it to be amazing. But for the brief go that we had on it, I was, I was a little bit like, I don't know what's a, what's a attack move here. I don't know what's a, like, because there was like animals, there was attack moves that you could do directly to your opponent. And then yeah. there was like buildings. And I, I the, the guy did try to explain it to us, to be fair to him. But like, like I said to you before, Marcus, on on, a, on, a, on another episode, I'm one of those guys that needs to be told like a thousand times, <laughs> you need to do this. You need to do that before I even grasp it. Because you were yeah. just, you, I don't know what you did, right? <laughs> the, the, when me and you went against, I don't, I don't know what you did, but you just like done one thing. And I was like, I had like 3% life left. Yeah, I powered up. I powered up my characters. Yeah, you, you know what? You, you're right. Actually, it was like Pokemon cards. So it's like, or sorry, not Pokemon cards. Like the Pokemon game, like turn based. So you have these like animals and characters, and and each level you get set. You get a certain number of cards, and you use them to batter each other. Basically, that's yeah, the so game. Cards are like the yeah. moves, isn't it? Yeah, basically. that's like any game. So that's that's cool. Like you know, me and Nick could have just played that. There's a million iterations of that game out there. Yeah, and there will be for years to come. But the difference was is between rounds we needed to charge up our points and that's yeah. where it became important. Like there was, we sat there and we had to, we had this time when we just had to be calm and the calmer we were uh, while taking these, these deep breaths in and out, the calmer we were, the more points we would get. But I like myself and Nick had a tablet each playing this game, by the way, I could see how calm you were, Nick and how calm i was in relation to you which was kind of putting pressure on me at the same time i was thinking oh i need to be a bit calmer i need to breathe yeah, a bit yeah. deeper yeah it's really weird because it's like as well for, for me like the 
you, you breathe in um, in unison with the the character on the game. So, like yeah. you said, you've got a tablet in your hand and you're and you're watching this character breathe in and then breathe out. You have to like mimic it. Yeah. And um, for for me, the, the the breaths were mad deep. I was like, <laughs> I was like, these are super deep breaths. I'm struggling to like breathe in for as long as this character's breathing in. So I don't know if that was helping or not. But um, you were beating me in that in that department as well the 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 calmness and and the breathing department yeah it, you know it was it was it was i found it off key at the start I, 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 at the start i was skeptical as to whether this was actually just like you know, are these things just charging up by themselves could i be going <laughs> but he said something to me at the start of a round and i started laughing or we were like talking about stuff and my character definitely wasn't powering up but then as soon as right. um, i took it seriously we were powering up again the weird thing was is that like when you're playing a game like that, we were um, the room went really quiet and it kind of got a bit tense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it makes it it makes it like way worse because mm. obviously you know the how to kill an and how to kill an hour office is kind of normally like banter flying around and you know people just being loud and like conversation. And all of a sudden, it was just like people were just paying attention to what we were doing. Yeah. It was like okay, but in long story short, sick technology, a very simple application of it. But we kind of touched on this in the interview with Simon Fox. Like, you, I was thinking, Nick, this could actually work really well in, in conventional computer games because the technology is not big. Clips on too easy. Like Metal Gear Solid, games like that. Yeah. Like, any, any, any game, like, where you're, you know, first-person shooter or you're playing as a character, mm. um, this is something that could be integrated into those games really, really easily. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I mentioned um, to Simon with with regards to like, you know, one of my favorite games, Grand Theft Auto, where it's like, I love Grand Theft Auto, but like you can just go up into somewhere and just like spraying up the place and like, you know, you can do whatever in it and, and it has no kind of, like how you actually feel has no bearing on the game. Yeah. Whereas like, if it was like, I don't know, you could, you, you had to go and do this mission, but like you had to keep your heart rate below a certain amount or, or or whatever like this could add a new element and a new dimension to the game yeah yeah it's crazy and also it's it's it must be kind of a good exercise to be calm when you want Zen. to be able to just calm yourself yeah because if you could calm yourself in the, in the gta environment when you're playing a game i suppose you could kind of calm yourself in life like if someone cuts you off or walks really slow in front of you or someone gets a bit <laughs> bad customer service it could be the difference between you flipping out or going Who, who's are i'm gonna be sound of mind and just talk yeah, to just your manager breathe in and breathe out. But yeah but anyway i'm um, there yeah, that was us trying out something very different bfb laboratories uh heart rate dynamics uh we've put links in the show description so you can check out their gofundme page their um their, their their crowdfunding page and and support the cause man they're doing really really well and hopefully when they've integrated this into other games me and nick will be at front of the queue to have a little go on them innit? yeah yeah man I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to that because like i said i feel like there's a lot of potential there um and and i feel like it will re rejuvenate a lot of games that you know some people may i'm not saying all but some people may have been like oh well that game's a bit dumb for me now even when like the next gen of it comes out they're like oh well it's just similar to the other if they integrate this it might be like oh well this is rejuvenating my interest in this franchise or whatever so yeah i'm excited exactly exactly wicked all right then cheers um well that's that episode i guess nice little bit of bonus content for you there's plenty of ways to kill an hour right now i'll be marcus bronzy and i've been nick right <laughs>